Joe, pretty bird. Tell us how you set this up. Well, actually, the, the color scheme of it, I wanted to do a candy apple red for a long time. And I'm terrible with matching colors. And my kids, they were at the, the pool next door, and there was a towel there. And it was a yellow towel with the Tweety Bird eyes and the orange, you know. And so I seen that towel, and I said, that's what i got to do. So that's where the paint scheme came from. Took the decals off of, you know, the towel and put them on there, and that's how the Tweety Bird came about. Must be a big hit with the kids. They, they all love it. They all walk up and say, yeah, Tweety Bird, you know, and everybody's taking pictures and everything. So, yeah, they love it. How have you equipped this aircraft? Uh, when I was building it, I looked at all the stuff that I would want to have in it, and I decided that I didn't want to make changes later on, so I tried to put everything in it that I thought I would, I would need. And so far, there's nothing that I can think of that I would change at this point. I can get anywhere and everywhere I need to, you know, with you know, the Garmin's and, you know, the radios and XCOM and uh, all that stuff. So it's doing real good for that for me. And if I can ask, how much time did it take for you to put this together and what kind of investment do you have in your ship? Well, what I did is you get videos to build it by. And what I would do initially, because I've never built any aviation thing before, is I'd watch the videos and I would kind of look at the time I go in my garage. You know, I keep track of that. And uh, by the time I got that far and finished it up, I probably have 800 hours in it, you know. And that's in the beginning I kept track of videos. Later on I didn't do that so much, you know. Uh, investment, that's a very good question, you know. I, uh, I've been wanting to do this helicopter thing since the 70s, you know, and finally was able to get this far, you know. The wife said, yeah, you know, she was hesitant, of course, you know. Uh, and as things kept going, you know, UPS would show up all the time, you know. I said, man, you're getting a lot of packages, you know. <laughs> so and quite honestly, you know, she may not believe it, but I've actually never added up the total dollar amount that I put into it, you know. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at cirrusdesign.com. What would you recommend to somebody who's l looking to buy a helicycle as far as their previous experience? What helicopters do you think will prepare them properly? Will time in an R-22 work well for you? And also talk a little bit about the performance and the way you're flying your helicopter. Um, the R-22 is, um, of course, the factory recommends that you get training in the R-22 and be signed off for solo, and, and I agree with them 100%. Uh, uh, it's a totally different animal than the fixed wing, and uh, if I'd have tried to go out and fly it without any training, it'd been five seconds, it'd been over. But uh, the R-22 really gets you prepared for it, and, and uh, it's not much of a transition. A you know, little tension when you first take your first ride up, and it's your machine, and you've got all this time and money invested, but, but the R-22 really prepares you for it. So. Well, I, uh, I live in kind of a tight area, so once I got a little more comfortable with, with the helicopter itself, I'm doing a lot of... Uh, Confined area approaches and, and maximum performance takeoffs, and it's just, uh, it's just, there's no problem. It, it's just got the power and anything I need to get in and out of there. I actually built the helicycle before I even took and pursued my helicopter rating. You know, I didn't actually want to be doing the helicopter training in the building at the same time. Once the ship was finished, I went out and did. Uh, training in the R-22, it's like everybody else, you know, you have to do your, your 20 hours before you can solo in R-22. I probably put 25 hours on it after some solo time, and then I went right into the helicycle, and I've been flying it ever since. Uh, performance on it, uh, I've been accused by these two guys of being the slow poke of the bunch <laughs> for, for some reason, you know. Uh, I'm typically, I say, putzing around, you know, any more the, the 90, 100 mile an hour range, you know, where uh, some others, you know, they're up a bit faster than that, you know, but I mean, it, it performs real well, you know, and it's, it's doing a real good job. Now, performance wise, um, I know for a fact that the helicopter will go to 12,840 feet and still climbs about uh, 500 feet a minute at that altitude. But uh, the, it, the operator is usually chicken out about that point, and that's when they come back down. <laughs> you did, huh? <laughs> Sunny or cloudy?
rainy or bright, day or night. The future of flying is now clearly in sight. Garmin SVT, synthetic vision technology. This is our second weekend together, the three of us flying. I mean, that's, that's been a blast. Homer Bells every year, July, several of us out there. But just the three of us, we live locally, and there's a couple other guys ready to be flying, and, and it's, it's a blast just getting together and flying to different places, different fly-ins. Yeah, last weekend, uh, Jay's Airport down in Paoli, they had airport day, you know, and I met Mark over Seymour, and then the two of us flew down to meet Jay, you know, and we flew around there. Uh, and then there was a parade, where was that, up in uh, Scotland, you know. Uh, Jay knew somebody up there, so the three of us, we flew over their parade and started that off, you know, and, and then stopped at Jay's house and fueled up and, you know, just, you know, call it bumming around, you know. So that's, <laughs> I mean, stories, I mean, that's, that's really what we've been doing, just flying all over and having a blast. I went to this guy's checkout, and it was, uh, it was a day where there was uh, some weather moving in on the Indiana Illinois border and and he's over at uh, Cincinnati so I had to go east to uh, to go to the checkout and and uh, call my wife after I'd been there about an hour and told her I was there and and she says it is just raining here at home and I'm like oh great you know so I checked the weather and it is there's some weather moving in and I needed to get back to this one airport to get some fuel so I could make it on to home well I'm headed that way and there's some lightning popping down ahead of me and it just didn't feel right so I looked down and I was flying over this farmhouse and this boy just kind of made eye contact with me that was there by the barn and so I just I just rolled it over and parked it in his backyard there and and uh, stood in the barn there with him and his dad and his, his uh, cousins and stuff that were coming in from the field is a big farming uh, family and uh, two hours of rain and then we went out and uh, he sold me some of his diesel fuel and I flew home <laughs> Uh, the helicycle's just been what it's been advertised to be, you know, it, it's, uh, it's got the performance, speed, power, um, maintenance, uh, of course I'm just getting through the initial maintenance, but after that it's just like um, Joe was saying, just a little grease here and there, and it's just been, it's just been great, so if anybody was going to go that way, I, of course I'd recommend a helicycle. But... <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it can be kind of tough, the choices, depending on if you want two seats, single seat, you know, if you want, uh, you know, not light sport, but ultralight type. You know, there's a couple other manufacturers out there. You know, uh, I mean, we've got we've got some good speed, some good range. You know, so of course we're all three biased. It's doing good for us. As as far as a time builder, it's it's turbine time, and there's just not enough money to to go out and get you turbine time starting out. And this this is the way to do it. I, I don't know of any other way you could do it. Uh, there's that old line about birds of a feather and all that, but BJ's legacy lives. Rotors on just uh, just fine, as we can see from three, these three gentlemen here. And for those of you uh, interested in the sport helicopter segment of uh, aviation, the helicycle might be a good way to go. For Aero News and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell.